Let me bring in somebody who's not afraid to approach the markets to help us parse through this. So rather, um, uh, I guess, I again, mean, like I said, really the uh, top day, Migs Lopez of hey. AMD Capital. Thanks for joining us again. So, Migs, we've seen that, uh, you know, it's been on a two-day rally pretty much over. I mean, how much of this is down to Janet Yellen's congressional te testimony when she dropped uh, what you'd say is a pretty obvious hint that they probably are going to raise rates in December? Okay, if you're going to look here, we're in, we saw the effects of the first Fed rate hike last right. December 2015. We see, we see the market dropping by almost 12%, right? Yeah. But I do think, similar to QE, we might see a diminishing marginal effect in terms of if, if and when they do raise their rates for December by around 25 to 50 basis points. We do see that the effects would be quite subdued as compared to last time. Uh, you think that there might actually be a bit of a, of a drawback also in, uh, immediately after that, and, uh, and, but not as big as, as uh, when it was the first time they raised? Yes, because if you're going to look at this one, it's not just their Fed rate hike. We also see, uh, well, we, we remember here China. Uh, well, the, the growth prospects being too dim. And we also hear, uh, we saw oil dropping by as low as around. So it really wasn't just the Fed it's that really was the, the reason. There, it, the same thing that's happening with the market right now. It's not just the Fed. It's about the policy. It's about the new presidency in the United States. So it's, it's a snowball effect. Now, I mean, Biggs, let me bring in the idea of valuations. We've talked a lot, sure. about, about, a lot about valuations over the last uh, few days. As sure. the market plummeted, a few of the asset managers we talked to, sure. so the guys ATR, were mm -hmm. saying that you know, valuations might actually be reasonably priced at the moment. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on this at the moment for, with regards to whether or not the, the, the PSE itself is overvalued? or not at the moment. Right now it's at 17.61 forward. Okay, if it's 17.61 forward, if we're gonna price it in at around 20 to 21 times, that's gonna give us, what, around uh, around 7.5 to 8? That's, not, that's, that's, that's no problem, it, it's, it's a good potential for us. It's actually a good type to bottom fish and that's why you're seeing right now that there might have been some churning effect in terms of uh, who's selling, whether it's, gonna be the for, uh, whether it's gonna be the foreign investors or the local investors. What we're seeing right now is that with 3Q earnings starting to become dim, is this going to be the new normal? Are we going to see earnings expectations to be dampened? And if it's going to be dampened, how is it going to affect the index? But how, and how much do these, um, uh, given all everything that's happened and the corrections we've seen, sure. how much do valuations now, such as PE ratios, play into your decisions as asset managers overlooking funds oh, in the PSE? It's actually integral. Right now, it's going to determine whether well, if you like a stock, that's no problem, regardless if you, know, if you see it by valuation or by technicals. The question is, though, at this point in time, the valuations would be your fallback. It's going to be your support system, so to speak. Even if, say, for example, a, a stock drops by almost 5 to 10%, if you know that you've entered the market at a certain reasonable level, or rather at a certain attractive level for you, then it's not going to be a zero-sum game wherein you're losing. It's just a matter of time where it, it gains back. Right, interesting. Um, I, know, I, I know Sean has a couple of questions for you as well, Migs. Hey, Sean. Throw it away. All right. Well, Migs, basically JP has been like pouring all these infrastructure stock. <laughs> now, earlier you might have heard Kintin also doing the same. Mm -hmm. Now, Metro Bank also, one official from there recently saying that it is a smart move for investors indeed. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this infra push and everything. Do you agree with this or do you think cash is still king in this volatile environment? Yes and yes. First off, cash is still king, especially when you have volatility like this happening, swinging the market 5 to 10%. So it's not really that normal. Secondly, infrastructure stocks, yes, go for them. But what I'm trying to tell you guys is that go for it for the long term. It, it's not just a short-term fling. It's going to be a long-term investment. Why? Because if you're going to look at, say, PPPs, it's not going to happen overnight or in a year. It's going to happen, say, the gestation projects would would take around three to five years. And if you're willing to wait for that, if you're going to be willing to wait for more than three to five years, then this is going to be a really, really good return for you. But if you're going to look at it and say, I'm just going to flip it or just going to churn it in six months to one year, you might be in peril. I mean, it's a play, but it's a patient play, you're basically yes, saying. Yes, basically, patient. it has to be long term. I mean, we all know how long it takes mm -hmm. to finish one PPP project. Now, makes you also like Mega World. This is quite a popular choice. Yes. What really, really sets it apart from its peers for uh, you? First up is valuations. It's 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 below index valuations right now. Let's they get got a closer look into this. Yes. They really got hit from, from, we thought it was going to be stable at around 450 to 470. They actually got hit. Now it's currently trading at around 3 78 because of pricing in of certain of several negative externalities particularly in the united states bringing back him well bringing back jobs back uh, with the trump presidency but what we're seeing right now is that in line with valuations in line with valuations is that 
mega world is doing pretty okay with 11% net well increase in net income so why are why are we exiting this fund it's because of well speculating on future policies i mean finally makes i mean this infrastructure push we have to also uh, encourage um look at energy and power also yes. and these are two of the other picks that you've okay. actually looked at right now first gen right. as well as petron i mean yes. can you walk us through what your uh, what your thesis and your viewpoint on this is okay if you're going to look at f gen the execution risk uh, i think has been minimized right now the earnings has been really superb so it's just a question of what's your target level for the profit here that's number one number two well whether it's gonna get hit by externalities because if you're going to notice people have been accumulating last year at around 14 15 even at 17 pesos a share so relatively if it's trading at around 23 to 25 pesos it's a gain for them so that's why you're seeing a bit of churning there in the market but in the long term we like it that's number one. For Petron, as we have noticed right now, uh, 3Q earnings has been uh, up by around 38-39%. Mm -hmm. We like it right now, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a play on oil. As compared to Shell, where it, in, it is a marketer, uh, Petron is really more of a refiner. Very interesting. I mean, the market seemed to be stuck in first gear. We'll see if it actually revives. Thanks for again for all, this, uh, all the guidance you've looked at for the stocks. Back up to you guys. Anytime.